Um, hello, so today we are going to do problem from weekly contest 340 um, that happened today. So the first problem is um, minimize the maximum difference of pairs. Um, so what we have here is we have um, an integer array um, and uh, an integer p and we want to find p pairs of indices in the array. So pairs that means just two elements such that the maximum difference between all the pairs is minimized. Right, so we want to choose. We have to, we can choose any num any numbers we want, um, but we want to choose them in a way that m makes the difference between all of them. If we take the max of that, that's the minimum possible one. Right, so it's sort of a min max problem. And the other constraint we have is um, we want only unique indices. We don't want to reuse a number multiple times in this p pairs. Okay, so that's the problem. Um, and here it just explains what's the difference, absolute difference. Um, and so the goal is the minimum maximum difference among all of these p pairs. It's easier if we look at an example. So here p equal to 2. So that means we want two pairs, all right? So we want two pairs and we can choose any pairs among these numbers such that we get the minimum maximum difference. So here we can choose for example, this one, index one and index four, zero, one, two, three, four, right? So the difference is zero. And then the other two we can choose are two and three, and the difference is one. So what's the maximum between zero and one? That's one. And so this is the minimum possible one we can obtain. If you try all the other combinations, you will get um, a bigger number. So that's the idea here. Um, and now, if we, of course, p, number of pairs, needs to be less than or equal to the length of the array divided by 2 because otherwise it's not possible. Um, and you can see here the ranges of the numbers is 10 to the power of 5. Um, so that tells you that we can't do an O of n squared algorithm. So we have to, to do something better, either O of n log n or O of n. Um, so let's see how we can tackle it. Um, okay, so let's see the first example here. How can we, how can we solve it? So this is the sort the, these sort of problems min max, right? So min max difference. We want to minimize the max difference of p pairs. Um, the the first thing that usually comes to mind for me is binary search because with binary search you can sort of simplify this problem and you will binary search for the minimum, but your function will need to just look at this. Um, but for binary search, we need to come up with a function, monotonic function, which basically means if that function is true for x, it should be true for x plus 1, it should be true for x plus 2, all the way up. And, and before that, it can be false. But once at some point it reaches true, it, it continues being true. So basically, we need to find a monotonic function like this. Um, where once it becomes true for x, it keeps being true for bigger values. If we can find that function, then what we are looking for, since we are looking for the minimum, we are just looking for the first true value here, right? Because, and this is this would be the minimum because this is the minimum function where it's, the function is true. So let's think a little bit about our function. What do we have? Well, we want p, p pairs um, and What's the goal of the function here? It's the difference. So let's just try to write some function in terms of the difference. So our function can be just can just check. Can we choose p pairs right with a maximum difference that is smaller or equal to x, right? Because if this is if this is possible, x is smaller than x plus one, and so by definition smaller than or equal to x, the maximum difference would be smaller than x plus 1. And the same thing applies to x plus 2, x plus 3, right? So this already tells us that it's monotonic, right? Um, and oh, of course, like, we can, ch if we, let's say if we can choose two pairs, uh, p, for example, with p equal to uh, 2, we can choose two pairs with maximum difference smaller or equal, for example, to 5, right? It makes sense that there is some value, some integer where it's false, right? Maybe if we can't find two pairs that are smaller or equal to three. But once we find for five, 
five is smaller than six. So by definition, we can find two pairs that are smaller than six. We can find two pairs that are smaller than seven because we can just take the same two pairs. Um, and so that's that's the core idea. Okay, so we, we know that our function is monotonic here. Now, the only thing left to do is first found the, find the boundaries of our binary search. So where do we start low and where do we start hi uh, high? And then the second thing is how do we how do we implement this function that checks if we can choose p pairs with a maximum difference more or equal to x, right? Um, so first, let's start with low and high. Well, those are easy. We can just look at the constraint, right? So the constraint says that um, the number can go to up to ten to the power of nine. So we can just choose the largest possible number here, plus one, so that we we are out of bounds. It's always wise for my method of binary search is to choose high to be just outside of the range and low just before the range, the possible range of values. So what would be the po just before the possible range of values? Well, all numbers are positive and we take the absolute difference for, for this difference, we take the absolute value. And so what's the smallest value possible for absolute value? It's zero. And so what's the value before zero? It's minus one. So let's actually take that. Okay. So now we know our template of binary search. I will write it in a minute. But now the only thing that we need to do is find this function. And then we can write our binary search in a way where we maintain the invariant that just like every problem I do with binary search, the function for low needs to always be false. So we maintain this invariant. And the function for high needs to always be true. And with this invariant, it would be really easy to write our binary search because if this function returns false, for mid, we just say low equal to mid. If it returns true, we say high equal to mid. So that makes it really easy. Okay, so now the last part is how can we write this function? That's sort of the, the tricky part of this implementation. Okay, so for this here, we want to determine if it's possible to choose p pairs with a maximum difference smaller than or equal to x, right? And so here, what this tells us is we want to we, we want to do it in a way that if we can minimize the difference, right? So if we want to pick each time, pick the smallest possible difference. So each time, pick smallest possible difference. Then if we do that, that will that will make it so that we have a higher chance of it's smaller than or equal to x, right? It's always better for, for smaller or equal to some x value. It's always better to pick, let's say this x is 5. It's always better to, tr to pick 2 instead of picking something bigger, let's say 6, right? Because if you pick a smaller, the smallest possible difference, you will have a higher chance of achieving um, the, the desired result, right? And so how do we make make it in a way that we always try to pick the smallest possible difference. Well, let's we'll just do it on a sorted array. So we'll, before even doing our binary search, we'll sort our um, array, okay? And now if we sort it, then let's say we have a sorted array for our original array here. So if we pick this one and sort it, so what, what will it be? It will be um, one, one, two, three, um, seven, ten. The problem just asks us for the pairs to be different indices. It doesn't um, ask because it doesn't ask us about any order, right? And so for this case, it's always better to pick adjacent value as a pair, because if you, let's say counter argument, what if you pick one and instead of picking the adjacent value, you pick three? Well, now the difference one minus three absolute value is actually two which is bigger than if you had picked a smaller value, right? Because why is that? Because by definition, when we sort, the adjacent value is the closer number. So the difference would be the smaller, will be as small as possible, right? And so that's why we sort and we compare against um, adjacent values. Because it's always better to pick an adjacent value than pick a far away value because it would be bigger, so the difference would be bigger. Okay, so now with that, what this tells us to do for our uh, for our can function here is we can just traverse, right? So let me let's say for example for x equal to two, 
right? So we are looking for whether we can choose p, we w whether we can choose two pairs where the maximum difference is small or equal to two. So what we can do then is just compare adjacent values. So we can check, start the, our index from here so that it can have an i minus one value. So basically what we'll do then is for each number, right? We'll just compare a of i minus a of i minus one. We don't need to take the absolute value because we know because we sorted AI is bigger. And we can just check if this is smaller than X, then just we found a good pair, right? So we increment our pair. And once we reach uh, P pairs, two pairs, we stop. We return true because we found, we found two pairs and this guarantees that the max diff is smaller than or equal to x because we don't p we don't take any pairs that have a difference greater than x, right? So this guarantees that we the max diff is smaller than x, smaller or equal to x, right? And so here, if it is, we increase the uh, the pairs and then we proceed. But there is one condition: the pro what if what if we choose these two pairs, but then we check two and then we choose these two pairs, then we took this one two times. And so we want to prevent that. Well, what's, how, how do we prevent taking the same number multiple times? Let's just have a set for the indices that we've used, okay? And, that, and then here, when we use the index, we just add it. So here we will add i and i minus one. And then here we just make sure that we don't, we don't pick an index that was already used. And that's pretty much it. Right? And so let's actually apply it to, to this example and see what it looks like now that we know how we are going to do it. So this will return true. And if we do it for all i um, and we don't find a pair a count of p pairs, then we return false. So let's apply it to this function here. And so we'll start with used set is empty. Right, um, and p equal to two, x is equal to two. So we'll say used initially is empty, and so we are here. One minus one is equal to zero, which is smaller or equal to x, and so we have pair is equal to one because we found these two pairs, and so now we put that we used indices uh, zero and one, okay. And then we go to the next index, which is two. Now two minus one is one smaller than or equal to x, but the problem is that one is already in the used set, so we skip it. And so we go here, two minus three, that's one. One is smaller or equal to x, and so that's a good pair because two and three are not in used. So we increment our count, and then we add two and three. And now count is equal to two, the pairs we need, so we stop and we return true, right? And so you can see it works. Now, with our binary search, we'll just try all the possible x values in our range, and we'll find what's the smallest one, which is the first true value, and we'll return that, okay? So our function here checks if it's possible to choose p pairs with the maximum difference smaller than or equal to x. Now, you might say, I didn't, you didn't see us use a max, right? But we actually just compared it against all of the differences. So that's equivalent to checking the max, right? Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, and in terms of time complexity, we are doing, we are sorting the array first. So that would be O van Lagen. And then we do a binary search, right? Binary search is O van Lagen, but what's the function um, okay, so what's the time complexity for the function? Because this function will call it on each binary search iteration. This function will just iterate through the array, right? As you saw in the example. So it's O of n. So this is lag n and lag n as well. So overall, it's just O of n lag n time. Now, in terms of space, we are just doing binary search using the same array. Um, so, and then using this used set um, in, in, in our binary search function. And this used set is going to be at most n, right, each call. Um, and then we are using it like n time as well. So similar space to uh, complexity. 
Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Now let's implement it and make sure it passes. Um, okay, so let's implement what we saw in the overview. So we are just going to do our binary search. Uh, first, we'll sort our array. Let's just rename this to A. Um, and then after that, what we need to do is we need to start our binary search. So minus one for low, as we said in the overview, and 10 to the power of nine plus one. So we have that the number values can go up to 10 to the power of nine. So just outside of that range, 10 to the power of nine plus one. And now we'll just do the usual template for binary search, which we want the difference between the we stop when the difference between high and low is one, which basically means that high is at the first true value and um, low is at the last false value, right? And then we will do our mid. So mid is going to be just the the mid between the two. So we just take the sum divided by two using binary um, operation like this. And now we check for our function. If the can function or that what we called f is true, then we want to maintain the invariant that high is always true. Otherwise, it's false, then we want to maintain the invariant that low is always false. So this makes it very straightforward, and then high at the end would be at the first true value. And the first true value is the minimum value where it's possible to do what we want. And so that's what we would return. And now we can just write our can function. So we pass x. And what we said is that we need a used function, a used set, so that we don't use this numbers in this in a pair that we've used before, right? Um, and then we want to count how many pairs we were able to get. And now we can just, as we said, it's always better to choose adjacent values because those are the closest to each other. And so that's what we are going to use here. Um, and then we just check if the difference between the adjacent ones is small or equal to x, so remember, we want the maximum difference to be smaller than this x. So we just make sure that all the values are smaller or equal to x. And so here, if that's the case, then we want to increment our count. And then we also want to make sure we don't use these, the, this pair again. So we add it to our use it set. And we want to make sure here also that we don't pick a pair of numbers that we've used before. And so we want to make sure that it's not in used and that i minus one is not in used as well. You could also do this maybe quicker with just taking the set intersection of i, i minus one and used, but this is just more clear. Um, and so now if count reaches the number of pairs we want, no need to look farther, we can stop here. So as soon as it's equal or bigger, you could also just check if equal then we can return um, true. Now, if we go through the entire array and we didn't find pairs, p pairs that are small or equal to x, then we can return false because it's not possible. And this should be it, so let's run it. Um, now, just mid here, this should be equal. Looks good, let's submit. Um, okay, we have one wrong test case. This is because p equal to zero. Um, this is just one edge case we need to handle. So if it's p equal to zero, there is no need to do anything because we, n we want zero pairs, right? So with zero pairs, the minimum thing to do, the minimum difference is just zero because it's nothing, right? And so we just return zero, okay? And now if we submit, This passes our test cases, okay? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Uh, please like and subscribe, and see you on the next one. Bye.